Welcome to the Legalpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Sager, founder and CEO of Legalpreneur Inc. As a serial entrepreneur and someone that works exclusively with small business owners legally protecting their business, I'm dedicated to covering common legal issues faced by business owners, providing you with the business knowledge you need to catapult your business's growth and showing you just how some of the world's most elite entrepreneurs have handled these legal and business issues themselves. In true attorney fashion, the information in this episode is not legal advice. This is for informational purposes only, and you should always consult with your attorney before implementing any of the information in the show. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Legal Preneur Podcast. I have an amazing entrepreneur and podcaster with me today, Stephanie Gass. She is the host of the Stephanie Gass Show, which is actually a top 25 podcast for Christian entrepreneurs. She is killing it in everything that she's doing, podcasting, teaching about podcasting, everything that she's doing. She absolutely kills it. And so I'm really excited to have her today and to have you hear from her. Thanks so much for joining me. Yay. Well, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. I, I'm pumped about this because we we haven't had a ton of podcasters on the show. So yeah. excited to hear from Hi. you. Tell, tell everybody your whole journey, yeah. your, everything. How did you get to where you are today? Yeah, so fun. Well, um, it all started, I guess, probably 10 years ago. And my then very high-level corporate career in finance Um, basically got pulled out from underneath me because the company shut down and I was kind of at this crossroad of, Hey Steph, we have a job for you in Germany or, you know, here's some paid leave for a little while while you figure out your life. Good luck. And so I had been, I was newly engaged at the time and I decided, we decided that I would try my hand at something else so that we could start a family. So I had never done entrepreneurship before no idea what I was going to do. I've always been um, like a leader. Like I was that kid, you know, back in elementary school, the, the bossy one at the front of the stage, like, Andrea, you're the tree. Stop talking. You know, like bossing everybody around. So I've always had that skill set, but I had no idea what else to do. Well, my mom had joined a network marketing company and network marketing wasn't big yet, like 10 years ago. And, and so I was like, well, I could do that. Like I could sell some face cream. I could do that. My, I, I think I can do that. And so I joined this company with her and made it. I have air quotes. I made it. I had the top 1% of the company and I had the big checks. It was hardcore, man. Like I, I was full out workaholic. I mean, every it was all about the success in the business and it was all about making more money and getting farther and farther and farther. But behind it all, like everything else was kind of crumbling. You know, and I think any of us that have been in that workaholic state of mind or that hustle more. And we think that the more that we get, the more we'll feel at peace or the more it will all be worth it. But at the end of the day, it all ends up kind of imploding. And so that's where I found myself four years into network marketing was panic attacks. Um, The business had kind of crumbled from underneath me because it wasn't mine. I had built a, bit, some, a business for someone else, you know, and no shade in network marketing. This could have happened for me doing anything because I was in the wrong mindset, right? I was in this mindset of more and me. And so, you know, for me, my faith really was amplified in that season because I realized that I couldn't build a business alone. Like the strength of Stephanie was not enough. And, but I knew I had this like calling on my life to help women, but I didn't really know how. And so I went through, I call it my Britney Spears year. Do you guys remember when Britney Spears lost her mind? She shaved her head and she had the umbrella. You know, do you guys remember? You remember? Yes. That was Stephanie Yass, 2016. I'm like pregnant with the second kid, eat crying into my Doritos because my life had fallen apart. Like the network marketing business had kind of crumbled um, and my identity was, was in it. You know, I was the business I had created. And so I didn't know who I was without it. And I was sitting here like looking at this person in the mirror that I didn't recognize. And so I went through like this true spiritual, like real surrender process around like, God, who am I? Like, what did you create me to do? And how am I, how am I to partner with you in this journey? 
And so my faith was really refined in that season. And I kind of put business last. I, I figured out again, how do I pour into my family? You know, I've been putting business above them and I've been putting business above my marriage and I've been, been putting it above my health. And so I took like this season away from entrepreneurship and I focused on my health and my relationship with Christ and my, all the things. And I emerged out of that season like renewed, but broke. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, I feel good in my heart. I feel good in who I, who I am as a wife and mom, but like, am I still called to do business? And at that point, you know, I kept feeling like these tugs, these whispers, like get back out there. And I was afraid because I didn't want to do it again the wrong way. And I didn't want to do it through my own strength again. And I was afraid of like falling victim again to myself, really, or like ego and wanting all the things. But I would tiptoe. I like tiptoed back in and I started doing lives. And I started with women who were network marketers because that's all I knew. And I was like, hey, you know, let's talk about conquering fear. And then let's talk about marketing online. And then I would hear like a little whis whisper, like pivot deeper or like, help them with this now. And so over this course of like two years, I just kept showing up really messy. And I had little kids and they'd come in and talk about poop and fruit snacks and everybody thought it was hilarious. And I, I started to normalize um, showing up in your mess. And so these women who like had calls to be business women, but yet had a mess in the background were like, oh, I kind of like her. Like there's something about her. Like she's showing up and she's, she knows her stuff and she's professional, but she's not hiding her kids and she's not hiding that it's hard. And so all of these things started to kind of come together when in 2018, I was like really growing slow. I was kind of doing some coaching here and there. I was kind of talking about growing a business online. I was kind of coaching some people, but I didn't really know what I was doing still. I just kept showing up and talking about what I did know. And I was kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall. I think so many entrepreneurs are like, I'm close. I'm in the direction, but like, what is it? So I went to, I went to sleep that night and I was like, Lord, I don't know the way. I don't know the way. Like I'm going over here and I'm going over here. And I know you're asking me to show up, but how? And I had a dream that night and it was so vividly clear. And I heard start a podcast. And I was like, excuse me, I don't, I don't listen to podcasts. I didn't listen. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. And it was like super weird. I had never considered it. I had only done video. I had a YouTube channel. I had live video on Facebook and I was like a podcast. Okay. So I, I had this old mic from Amazon. It was really staticky and I plugged it in and I was like, what should I call it? And I just picked what my Facebook group was called. At the time, it was the Mompreneur Mastermind Show. And I started talking. And like everything transformed for me, Andrea, after like a couple episodes of realizing I didn't have to do my makeup ever again. I didn't, I didn't have to put on. I could stay in my comfies. Like there was so much freedom for me because I did have the little ones, you know? And so I started podcasting. And I was able to like get freedom from social media too, because social media was like a big idol in my life where I always felt addicted to it. And I'm like, wow, I don't have to show up on social. This is growing way faster. So I did that. And about six months in, people started asking me, how do I start a podcast? And I was like, okay. So I started coaching people. Then I was like, I cannot coach another human how to start a podcast. So I created a course and that course started going crazy. And then I realized I could create a course for the first part, which is what am I called to do, Steph? And so I created Clarify Your Calling, which helps them. What are you called to do? And you can actually make a business out of it. You can create a business from your purpose, have a podcast to scale your, your audience, and then monetize it using a course. So over the past three and a half years, I've really optimized that process. And what's so crazy is like, now I have a half a million dollar business we have 12 people on the team. I have an almost million download show. And I'm just like, what is happening? Like, it's so cool when you finally like get what your thing is and you, but you move into it in a way in which it's not your everything. 
You know, it's, it's how do I serve people more? And then for me, it was letting God really take the CEO seat in my business. And yep. that's what I do. I love that. Oh my gosh. Okay. There's so many things I want to dive into, but I, I feel like we're in, like we had like a similar place in our lives. Cause like going from Andrea Sayer law to legal preneur, I, at that point, I was, you know, just bored with the law firm. And I, at that point, I just surrendered. I was like, okay, I know there's something next. I just don't know what it is yet. And I literally just meditated on it. I just, I said, I'm surrendering, I'm surrendering. And then it hit me. It hit me like a ton of breaks. And I was like, this is great. So right. and I was, fine. all at the same time. <laughs> Yes, it is. And people always talk about surrendering and it's like, well, when is it going to hit me? And it's like, people tell you, you'll just know. And there's no way to describe it. Like you literally just know. Yes. <laughs> I love that you went through that same experience. Okay. So first, I'm so curious, what was your finance job? Yeah. So I was a financial controller for this German company that made, you know, like the solar panels on houses. Well, they also have these, they're called solar receivers. They're huge tubes for like large plants. So we made those large tubes that would go all over the world. And um, we did that until it didn't work and went went out of business oh, here. Yeah. The big company yeah. you know, just here wasn't working. And so I did that. And I have a, I have a uh, master's degree in accounting and finance. And so it's oh so God. funny. I hate math. I hate math. <laughs> I love a spreadsheet. I love me a spreadsheet. Oh my God. But like math, I'm like, hold on, let me grab my phone. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. Like how we have these degrees that it's good. And I'm glad that I have it, but it's funny because it's just sitting on a shelf and I'm totally excited about that. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Okay. So now I want to hear if we can talk about this, your relationship relationship going through like those tough periods yeah. because I for me personally when I would be busy in the hustle and like I was getting a lot of pushback from my ex-significant other and and we're not together now for many many reasons but I know 100 I was actually just talking to a friend about this earlier this week like unless you have that like your your partner is so key into being an entrepreneur. Like if you don't have the right partner, like you will not survive as an entrepreneur. Either you won't, (laughs) that relationship won't survive or your career as an entrepreneur will not survive. Right. So I would love if you could like go into that a little bit more. Yeah. You know, what was so great about my husband was he was very supportive, even though he probably thought I was gone, lost my mind. And we did have a few conversations around like, geez, you know, it's all, all you're caring about or like, it's what you're focused on. And I would create excuses and validate my behavior. But I think what he knew is that like, he was more mature than me to know, like she will realize what is most important. And so he was just very faithfully there by my side, annoyed often, but there. But I think if I was to go back and so I, A, I just got lucky with someone who was very supportive of the way that I was idolizing business is truly what it comes down to. It really was me not being willing to set it down. And we have to be willing. What is it all for? If we're not willing to set it down and be like, let me truly be present. Let me truly go spend this time with you or the kids or go on this trip, like break my pattern interrupt of what makes me feel good, which is work, because that's what I'm good at, to something that you want for the family and you know what what is it all for and so i didn't have the right vision there but he was he was just faithfully there but if i could go back you know what i would say is have sooner than later have these conversations like don't be afraid of hard conversation you know i heard something recently that was conflict isn't always bad you know conflict can be so great because it brings up things that you can both work on and there is a solution to every problem there is a middle ground to every battlefield right so you've got to find that middle ground and go hey you know i've noticed that you've pulled away or i've noticed that these things like have i done something to offend you and is there any way that we can come together it's a lot of humbling yourself and then a lot of listening And then a lot of like searching your heart for what you need to change. I think the other big piece for me that I've learned is like so many issues aren't me projecting on him. It's a mirror 
and I'm looking into it going, oh, wow, I have work to do. I have work to do. Not to say that your spouse is perfect and you're listening to this or your wife is perfect or whatever, but have the conversation and say, where's our, where's our middle ground of this battlefield? And be willing. Because there's a hundred, like the other cool part about this for me, if you're the one like, I've got to work, I've got to make this happen, stuff like I have goals. Great. But don't you have decades to make those goals, hap- goals happen? And do you have decades to pour into your family? Do you have decades to do these things that are right there in your home today? Probably not. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. And I, so I 100% guilty of the same thing as you. And since I now have 50% of my kids, right. I'm very, very dedicated to, if I have these kids, I am not working. Even like right now going through our raising round, I, even if it's an investor call, like I, if I have my kids, like not happening, well, number one, because you don't want to have a call when my kids are here. Cause that's a real messy one. <laughs> Exactly. I can just hear I can hear Thomas and Allie in the back fighting like while on this investor. Exactly. <laughs> but I really like and I was right there where you were. And now with my kids, I am very, very strict with my time. Right. Because when I'm with my kids, I want to be present. And I, I need to be present because I know now like my time literally is limited with yes. them. Um it's literally cut okay. in half now. So, um, and it's just carving out that intentionality, right? And there, there's never a, it's too late. It's over. There's a, Hey, right now. And you mm -hmm. know, for me, sometimes that's like today I do have to work all day, but guess what? On Saturday we don't. And we're, I'm going to do this and do this and do this. So I'm intentionally kind of putting it in the calendar to make sure that they have priority time. And I know that looks different for all of you listening, but just inventory yourself. That's all it takes. Take, be willing to look at yourself and say, what do I need to change? Don't run from the things you need to change. Push into them because they'll make you a better business owner. They will make you more money. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the business I have today if I wasn't able to create boundaries, if I wasn't able to be intentional, if I wasn't able to, you know, do it for the right reasons, I'd still be over there in hustle mode scraping by. Yeah. So what would you say to the entrepreneur that's listening that is just stuck in that hustle mode, whether they realize it or not, they are hustle, 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 mm. and maybe they do realize it and they they want to not have to hustle so much. What would you say to them? You know, the first thing I would do is I'd inventory what you're actually doing and then I'd inventory what you actually do. So a lot of when I work with a client or they go through my, my school they don't know what they do. They can't even tell me what you, what I do. Like, what do you do? Can you answer that question? And often I get this long, drawn out, like circle-y answer. They're like, I kind of do this, but then I could like do that for this person or this person. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we got some work to do. Like, if you don't know what you do, you will hustle till you die and never make an impact because they don't know what you do. No one's going to come spend money with you if you don't know what you do. So you you have to figure that out. You have to you have to create a, f a foundation of stone if you want to build a house. And so many people are running over there trying to buy shutters when they haven't even laid the concrete. And I'm like, stop the madness. You know, get to the roots of what your business is. Spend some time in the weeds. Like, get to know people. Talk to people. Fix your messaging. Fix your marketing. Fix the way that you show up and the way that you sell and why you're selling, then you won't have to hustle. You know, straight from my podcast, I tell, mine is a, mine is a woman, she's a faith-led woman, and I say, hey, you have a call in your life. You can create a business from it to help other people, and you don't have to use social to do it. You can do it from behind a mic with a course and have time for your family. Come to this link. And let me show you. It may not be for you. Permission to buy nothing. Just come check it out. And we, I convert from the podcast like 15% just from the podcast. And it's because I know what I do and I know she wants it. So those of you that are hustling, it's because you're throwing spaghetti at the wall. You're trying to see what will stick instead of doing the work to find out what will stick before you make the spaghetti. Does that make sense, Andrea? 
Yes, absolutely. That is so helpful. And I think that that's probably resonating with a lot of people listening because I hear from people all, I mean, I have these calls with clients and they're like, Oh, I do this and I do this. And I'm like, I think you're doing a little too much. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think again, like to this point, what are you doing too? So even if you know what you do, okay, I'm a fitness coach, you know, for busy corporate men. Okay, great. You're, you're a fitness coach for busy corporate men. Where are you building your business? Oh yeah. Well, I do lives and I do TikToks and I do reels and I do clickety clinks and I show up over here. And I'm like, pick the thing. You know, people are so busy jumping to the next thing. They haven't created any clout on the first thing. So that's why like another piece of my model is get off of all the things that are an algorithm based. Get off all of them and pick a platform you can own. And the truth is there's only three. You can do video and own it and put it on YouTube as well. You can do a podcast and own it and share it on all the podcasting apps. Or you can do blogging. That's it. All these people trying to build businesses and post everywhere on social platforms, they're making a huge mistake. And the mistake is there's no conversion. People are there going, what's in it for me? I need an I'm out. I have a one second attention span and they're gone and you've made no money and you've spent all of this time and you're wondering what's wrong with you. And the truth is nothing's wrong with you. You're not showing up in a platform where people have their arms out going, teach me something. And so you've got to really evaluate why you're showing up where you're showing up and who told you to do that. And then ask yourself why. You don't have to do anything. You get to create your own way. And that is so freeing for so many entrepreneurs. It is. Yeah, I, oh my gosh, I love everything that you're saying right now. <laughs> but let's go ahead and pivot really quickly yeah. into what types of legal protections have you or have you not had in your business? Yeah. So I, thankfully, I'm doing pretty well, I think. Uh, after like going through all the pieces with Andrea, you know, we have a trademark. Now my company is the Ste is Stephanie Gas. So I am now the brand and the company. So we've got the trademark protection on that, on all the classes. Um, the copyright stuff is all locked and loaded. And I also have all of the contracts for every single piece of my business, obviously from Legalpreneur. And this protects me in my courses. It protects me in my client calls. When If I work one-on-one -on -one with people, it protects me in my coaching program that I, that I have. I have contractors. We have interns. I have an employee now. All of that has contracts in place. So that's what I have. Feeling pretty good. <laughs> You are doing really well. You're doing very, very well. Because you guys, she came to me, we talked, I guess, like a month or two ago. And she was like, I'm getting more serious and more serious. And I want to get all, all the even more legal protection in place. And I was like, absolutely, let's do it. So I love when people come to me the way you did, because a lot of times they'll come to me and they're like, oh, I think I need this. I think I need this, but I don't know if I want to do it yet. And you were like, no, let's just do it. I'm like, yeah. yes, like you're just doing it all. So yeah. I commend you on putting in the work for that because you recognize, hey, we're growing an empire over here and it has to be protected. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think the biggest piece of, of being protected is you know that you've built something that is creating impact and income, right? And so you don't want ever the rug to be taken out from underneath you where now you don't get to show up in your business because you're fighting some legal battle or you're dealing with some infringement thing. Like, I just want to show up to my business and sleep at night and be like, I am doing everything I can to help the people that I'm called to help. And so if having these protections in place, I hope I never have to use any of them. <laughs> I hope that is the end result, right, Andrea? And maybe it is. And that would be great. But I just don't. Why not? be protected so that you can sleep and so that you can know that you don't have to just ever worry about that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. So we, in these interviews with you giving the audience your biggest business tip, doesn't have to be anything legal. We just want to hear your number one business tip. Yes. Oh, I love this one. So I want you all to imagine your entrepreneurship journey is a book. Okay. Now the cover of your book is what do I do? Right? What do I do? And is someone going to pick up the book? So that's where we start. Fix the cover of your book. Okay. Larry's and Lin Linda's 
fix the cover of your book or ain't nobody going to grab it off the shelf. So that's the first piece. The second piece I want you to understand is the back of the book. The back of the book is your branding, your website, your messaging, your copy. You've got to fix what's coming out of your mouth. Okay. This is not about you. This is about them. Who are you called to serve? Why? How do you fix their problems? The thing that I have all of my students figure out is the number one problem they solve. What's the number one problem you solve? That's on the back of your book. Okay, so now you have a book. People are picking it up. They're like, oh my gosh, this is exciting. I want to read the book. And then they open the book and they're like, ooh, you lost me in the first five minutes, right? Because you're you're confused. You're showing up on Instagram. You're showing up over here. You're talking about this. You're trying to sell this and that and that and that. Tiny offer, big offer, small. Like, okay, pick what the story's about, right? Pick the one thing. So again, like, I feel like you guys go, and it's not everyone but maybe I'm talking to some of you, you try to sell everything, hoping to make a dollar instead of I'm willing to figure out what the one thing is and wait so that I can truly make a difference. And when you make a difference, you make money, right? So inside the book, you're going to have lots of chapters. Chapter one is uncomfortable. Chapter two is uncomfortable. Three, four, five starts to feel a little better, but then, oh crap, here comes something else, you know? The, oh, here's the climax of the book. I thought I was through this. Like, this is so hard. I'm going to give up. But you keep persevering. You don't quit on your book. You don't throw it in the trash. You're five chapters in. Stay where you are. Live in the chapter that you're in. Live in the chapter that you're in. Keep going. Keep writing. Because before you know it, you get to the end of the book, right? And it feels like, wow, well, that wasn't so hard. I wrote the book. But while you were in it, it felt so hard and so overwhelming. This is the journey of an entrepreneur, okay? And what I want you to understand is everybody starts with the cover. Everybody starts there. Everybody starts with the back. Then they go to the inside. And everybody has a hot mess express, right? We all start with a draft. But we have to lock into the true story of our business. And once you figure that out, you will have a bestseller on your hands. Oh my gosh. I've never heard that before. That was so good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Please tell everybody, where can they find more about you? Yes. Uh, you guys can come hang out with me on the Stephanie Gas Show. Uh, it's for the faith-led woman, but I have lots of guys. They're so fun. There are, you know, our dadpreneurs over there that come hang out. And it's really about having a God-centered business. And it's about figuring out what you're created to do and then pouring into that so that you can build a scalable business that creates impact and income. Yes, so that you can make a difference, but also for the kingdom of God. That's what my podcast is about. That's the business that I'm so excited to be able and blessed to run. And you can go check out my website is Stephanie Gass, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E-G-A-S-S dot com. And I've got free stuff. I have a clarity workshop, free downloads, free gifts for you guys over there. And um Come start with the podcast. Like, check me out. See if I'm your cup of tea, you know? I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You guys go check her out. Everything will be in the show notes. This was amazing. I love the book tip. Like that was that was amazing. I love that. So thank you. And we'll see you guys next time. Here at Legalpreneur, we're committed to providing a supportive legal community for all business owners. I know how scary the legal stuff can be. If you found this information helpful, I would be so grateful if you could share it with a fellow business owner. And quite frankly, it doesn't cost anything to rate, review, or subscribe to the show. Your support helps me reach more listeners, which allows me to support more business owners in their entrepreneurial journey. Have any questions or comments about the show? feel free to drop me a line on Instagram. I promise I read all of the messages and comments. And if you want to be a guest on the show or know someone that would make a great guest, simply fill out our application form and a team member will reach out if we think it's a good fit. I'll see you in the next episode.